Okay, hi, good afternoon everybody. I'm Lara Doyle uh, from Pierre for Monet. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. Welcome to this panel on Marketing 2020. I'm joined today by some lovely people who are going to um, discuss this topic with me. So if I can hand my over to I'm good, so I need to do the... T um, I'm Gary Lee from Red Eye, so following on... Has anybody heard of Red Eye? I've got more hands. Mark, the directors at the back should be pleased. Um, so I'm the CEO at Red Eye. We are a multi-channel personalization company. We've been around for nearly 20 years now. I've been at Red Eye personally 14 years. I've been in digital for 17 years. And the subject is like, it's a great one because it's talking about the future, but also how what we're doing now will affect the future. So I think that's that's why it's an exciting. Hopefully, that's why it's full. Yeah, yeah, like you say, it's very full. So there's a lot of interest in this topic, um, and we've got a lot to get through. So I'm going to go straight into it. What traditional ma marketing methods has modern technology transformed, and where will they be in the next five years? Marketing itself, the principles haven't changed. If you look at the core things of delivery, reporting, execution, they're all the same types of principles to a marketer's job, but they are just on acid, basically. They're just faster because of Moore's Law. Moore's Law, for anybody who doesn't know, basically says every two years, processing power gets twice as fast. Technically, there's a the whole thing with transistors on circuit boards, but we won't go into that. But ultimately, that's what's happening every two years. You know, the power you've got, the storage is getting faster, and as a result, you can do everything more accurately. You used to be able to spend two months, three months, four months, my boss probably told you 10 years, planning DM with detailed segmentation, which you do in an hour now, and you automate it, and you move on to the next thing. I think that's the thing that's the power and the speed is what's changed. All right, so um, what, has, what opportunities has modern marketing technology enabled for marketers today? And which of those are fads, and which should we be concentrating on as skills for 2020? If we're talking really about what marketing, what, what's changed in marketing because of technology and what it's leading to, data is, I'll say this a lot, but I would do because I'm a data geek, but data is the thing that's changed everything, and it'll lead into personalization. That's what the world's about now. The customer will drive it. The technology is already there. To be honest with you, the, and it's a question we ask later on, but ultimately the one thing that holds us back from doing certain things will actually be, no offense to the marketeers in the room, but it will probably be the marketeers who are trying to catch up with the technology. The technology is there. Most of what you want to do is already available. You just need to embrace it and then use that data. And it's that speed and the power you've got. Data's always been there. Back in the old days, 30, 40 years ago, they always had the data. They just had them in these huge big, War Games was on the other night, so anybody who's not seen War Games, it, like these huge supercomputers of the past, you know, our iPhones now have got more processing power than the computers they had 20 years ago. And that ability means you can unlock that data, which is why personalization, and the customer wants that. The customer doesn't have a desktop anymore. Most of the people you deal with are tech savvy, disposable income, have never owned a desktop. They've rarely used a laptop, and their desktop is actually their mobile phone and they expect that personalization to be across every platform and across every channel. Well, just breaking into that a little bit further, if you're talking about personalization, what skills then should marketers be developing in order to be able to, t to make the most out of the technology that's available to them? For fear of repeating myself, data. Uh, most marketeers, and actually leans on what was said a second ago as well, most marketeers are having to become more data savvy. They are. I mean, most, most marketing people I know have always had a good, you know, back in DM days, the best marketeers were always good data people, but that just becomes more and more prevalent. And yes, they are having to become more tech savvy. You know, the guys who come in at age 20 into our offices know far more about modern technologies than the majority of people, and it scares and excites and each will measure, I think. So talking about the pace and the size of the technology landscape, um, in your opinion, where will that be in five years? Are we going to be creating more and more types of technologies to enable our daily jobs, or is it all going to kind of explode, and, or implode, rather? Are we on? Yeah. I'm OK. Uh, I, think, I think when I read this question, my first thought was, it's just natural selection. 
good people, uh, you said it earlier, good people will come through, good marketeers will come through. It doesn't matter that there's more technology, there's more data, et cetera, et cetera. The good people will handle it, the good people will evolve. The people that aren't as good are being found out quicker and they're having, I mean, one of the points was, are they getting more overwhelmed, are they getting more stressed? Well, they probably are, the bad people, because they're not able to hide anymore. Technology is allowing us to move so quickly. I mean, it's uh, talking about a skill, I would, the word I would use is adaptability or being open. The more open you are, the more adaptable you are. I love the whole idea of you forcing people to you know, research and understand modern technology, because that's the only way it works. Wonderful stat that I read in Forbes yesterday. The CMO this year will have a larger technology budget than the CIO or the CTO. That's how marketing is adapting, uh, and people within marketing, just the good people will adapt with it. So let's have a little chat about marketing automation. It's on everybody's lips. Do you think that organizations or the majority of organizations will be fully automated by 2020 or are we still going to be battling up the hill of getting that right? I, I, well, I'd like to think they are, that's just because that's what we do, but um, if they're not, then it's probably our fault. But they, they w I think it's impossible to say it'll be 100%. I think anything that's 100% is probably not real, but if they're not 90%, then we're doing something wrong. Some, the best companies now are at least 50% automated. Some of the guys we're working with at 75 and asking to go up and up. So it, it is what the future's about. And it, actually, we have almost moved on from automation and it's gonna come about predictive. And it won't, it'll actually be about predictive modeling and that'll be the aut next automation as opposed to some of the automations now, which are becoming a little bit almost passe in terms of how most people are now doing them. Everyone's looking for the next thing and it's now, let's make it a lot far more intelligent. And intelligence will be what the future's about. It'll be about using the technology, using the data, using this extra power we've got to be more intelligent with, with what we do. And that's great for everybody in the room because a wonderful analogy someone drew the other day, which was uh, when Gary Kasparov lost, I'm not a chess geek, but honestly, but Gary Kasparov lost to Big Blue, the IBM computer a chess game in 1997, everybody said, that's the end of the world and computers are taking over and it's all about automation. Yes, to a certain extent, but actually what it did is there's twice as many chess grandmasters now as there were then. The automation and the intelligence is actually driving more intelligent marketeers, which is feeding back and which is why I think we'll start getting more, a lot cleverer with the automation rather than just standardized. So let's talk about wearables. Are they a uh, fad of the now? Are we going to see them in 2020? And if so, is there an opportunity for marketers in wearables? I'm scared now because I'm the, I'm the non-creative guy. I feel like I'm the bad boy at the end of the uh, thing. Um, yes, they are. I think, I think probably wearables is one of the areas where um, the customer will probably hold us back because the technology is already ahead and it's actually what people are comfortable with is actually what, what's actually the future. Um, most of what you see, the, for some reason the Jetsons is always, for anybody who doesn't know what the Jetsons is, I'm sorry, but I know, I know you will. Um, but f for anybody who doesn't know, it was, it was like this cartoon of the future. But with the exception of flying cars, all the things that were in it and all the things in Star Trek, the whole like talking to someone without a phone on your watch or anything else, they exist now, we're just not comfortable with doing them all the time. You know, Google, Google Glass is a reality. Google, Google, uh, they're the kings of, as you said earlier, try something that doesn't work, move on. That's what they do. They're a whole massive separate department that that's all they do. It's the biggest part of Google. And they, but they've gone on to level two and they're already prototyping Google free. That wouldn't be there if they didn't see that there was a marketing future in it. And it, to give you the most easy, obvious answer, if, and I'm a, I'm a geek at the heart. So, so if I'm walking past Forbidden Planet and I'm wearing my Google Glass or I've got my Apple Watch and whatever else, and suddenly the iBeacon in that store does a little ping out and gives me an advert saying, oh, two for one on Star Wars t-shirts, I'm in there. And that's how marketing can exploit wearables in the future. They are now, it's just how prepared we are to accept them. I just wanted to share my favorite geeky niche wearable at the moment. Has anybody heard of the Volvo bike helmet? So Volvo's building, well, it has it's built a prototype of a bike helmet. And uh, because they've got this whole mantra about uh, safer cycling on the roads and they're building the technology into their cars so that when you're driving along, you get a warning if someone's wearing a, a, a helmet ahead of you so that you can move out of the way and the helmet also gets a warning. So it's just a nice example of it's, it's niche technology, but actually it's incredibly useful for our futures. And the opportunity for the marketer then is obviously how cool is Volvo for building something like that? I'm not sure I want a helmet. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. I hope that you enjoyed the panel discussion. I'm, I think that 
our guests will be available outside if you'd like to have a chat with them. Um, and hopefully it's given you some food for thought for uh, what technology will look in 2020. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.